Hi, I'm Mike Owner of the InGroove in Phoenix, Arizona. So normally for Record Store Day, I do unboxing videos. But this time I wanted to do a little bit more of an in-depth review on something because it kind of took me by surprise. Uh, when I saw this title online, I really didn't think much of it. But then when I got it and I cracked it open, I listened to it, I was pretty shocked at what it actually was. And that is this Todd Rundgren something, anything, box set. Now I saw this originally online and I'm like, why do we need a four disc version of Todd Rundgren's something, anything, you know, it just didn't make a lot of sense to me what exactly it was because it wasn't really very well explained on Record Store Day website. But when I got the box and I saw the hype sticker, uh, remastered from the original tapes at 45 RPM by Chris Bellman. And I thought to myself, that's kind of crazy. What we're getting is like a UHQR one step, 45 RPM mobile fidelity, you know, analog product, like a full blown audiophile release of a title. Let's give it a listen to. Now, it doesn't explicitly say on here that it's 100% analog. My thinking is it is for a couple of reasons. This is common wording for them on analog releases and also this came out as a 33 RPM a year or two ago that was an all analog release cut by Bell, Chris Bellman. I don't know why they go through making a 45 RPM version of this that was digital. In any case, let's talk about the sound quality because that's what really matters. But let me show you this a little bit. So yeah, we've got the box set. I think this is about $80 is the suggested retail price. Each disc comes housed in this gatefold showing what appears to be the master tape box. Who knows if that's a facsimile. We've got tape reels which you know, appear to be the master tape reel, although there's no splicing in it, which is kind of odd. Typically you'll get splices. I mean, there's a couple here. Maybe they just spliced out the, uh, I think there was four singles on this album. I mean, you had Hello, It's Me, Wolfman Jack, I Saw the Light, and what was the other one? I don't have all the track listing on here. Oh, on the front here. I'm trying to remember the, I forget the fourth. I think there was four singles on this album. But yeah, so we've got these discs, which are these jackets, which essentially show some master tapes, right? You do have some leader tape on here at the very least. But like I uh, discovered when I went to Mobile Fidelity and we talked about the Beatles box set and they're like, we talked about the photography on that, and their comment was, yeah, we can't take the Beatles master tapes and send them to a photo studio to get photographed. That's not really something that's going to happen. Okay. And then the discs, which are these uh, four separate colored vinyl versions. So, again, it wasn't really well described, and I thought to myself, you know, this is cool, because this is... Record Store Day has really morphed into a little bit of something for everybody. A little bit of jazz, a little bit of rock. I've seen even a classical title, audiophile titles, a couple of seven inches, punk, metal, picture discs. I mean, they're trying to cover everybody's basis. So you're noticing, oh, I see a lot of people complain that there's only a couple releases, but I posted my uh, recent video, which was essentially a look at the list. And it seemed that almost everybody was at least interested in a couple of titles. And I think that's kind of the main focus of Record Store Day, is not to necessarily have 50 titles that everybody wants, but to have at least one, two, three, four titles that get people out of the house. I think that has been kind of the case for me this Record Store Day as well. It's not been to where I'm going to be taking 20 titles home, like some of the Record Store Days in the past, but there is a good solid three to five titles that I will be taking. This is one of them. So I took this home and I gave it a listen and I compared it. This is what I have at the moment. I actually listened to the previous 33 of this and it was good. 
uh, and I'm pretty sure I kept it. I just don't know where the hell I put it. It's in a box somewhere, but I'll show you what I have on the shelf. I actually, this is a weird album for me because there's some really good solid tunes on it, and then it goes a little bit off the rails, and you know, this is, people often talk about the Beatles' White Album and how and what it could have been if they smushed it down to a one-disc set. This really should have been a one-disc set, but that's just my opinion. But I've got an original, like, just minty, minty, minty white label promo, right? So this is in my collection. So I compared it against this. I've got a non-white label promo. I had a promo of this as well that was on colored vinyl, but it wasn't in the best shape, so I got rid of it. That would have completed the uh, promo trio. And I actually have this as a uh, mobile fidelity title. This came out in the end of this series in the 90s. Uh, it's not very good sounding. I'll start right off there. I've got one on uh, set for sale on the website. <laughs> if you want a not very good sounding mobile fidelity of Todd Grundgren's something, uh, anything. Uh, it's a little dull and it's a little lifeless. None of these... Uh, I've not find, found a lot of Bearsville records that actually sound like, wow, as in, you know, the, most of them are satisfactory. This is one that the original actually sounds pretty decent. I mean, compared to a lot of other stuff I've listened to on this label. It's a pretty decent sounding record. Noisy, not the best vinyl, even a stone mint promo copy such as this, which probably was never played. I got this from a guy who was an industry insider who just amassed tens of thousands of promos, more than likely played none of them because he was just giving them for free, right? So this was probably never played and it's a little bit noisy. This though would be my go-to of what I have here until I got the new box set. The Mobile Fidelity has always been a little bit lifeless, a little bit... Uh, it's like a little limp would be the best way to describe it. The original of this has some nice bass. It's a little muddier, but it, 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 it bumps a little more, and it has a little bit more better defined instrument separation. It has a better bottom end. It's a little bit more boomy, which for this record works. Uh, it has a more in-the-room sound with the vocals, the background singers in it. You know, it kind of has a larger sound stage more presence of, you know, they're in the room singing to me, that kind of deal. It, that gets lost on the mobile fidelity. Uh, but I gave this a listen to, and I, this is the best sounding I've ever heard this record sound. And I was just really taken back by that because that's not something I expect really to get on Record Store Day. I really just don't associate Record Store Day with, with getting the best sounding version of an album, but that's pretty much what happened here. This particular record benefits immensely from being at 45 RPM. Uh, the bass is just so much better, well-defined, tighter. There's upper end frequencies on this that I've never heard on any other version of this release. Also, the vocals. Todd has such a beautiful voice on some of these songs, and it really just gets exposed even more on this 45 RPM cut. The background singers kind of float more on the soundstage and kind of fill it better. Everything about this is so vastly superior than my original and the mobile fidelity copies, the copies that I've heard in the past, my originals that I've heard in the past. This really truly is a fantastic sounding album. It's something, again, that I just did not expect to get for Record Store Day. It was just not, <laughs> it was a surprise. It was a pleasant surprise. But I can't recommend this highly enough, more highly, if, you know, if you're a fan of this album. I could see it might not be for everybody. But uh, again, there is some absolutely fantastic tunes on this record, and they're really on full display here at this, uh, in this new in incarnation, the 45 RPM cut version by Chris Bellman at Bernie Grunman Mastering. Translucent vinyl. The pressing itself was flawless. No noise. Quiet as a whistle. I mean, can something be quiet as a whistle? I don't think that's a thing. 
Whistles are noisy, right? I think I got that wrong. You get the drift. It's really quiet. No pops, no clicks, no ticks. Really, really quiet. Uh, man, oh man, has colored vinyl come a long way. But give this a listen to. If you're a fan of this record, like I said, for what it is, it's not a ton of money. A four-disc box set. I think it's 80 bucks. A really solid record store day release. So, it, 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 again, it's truly getting to the point where Record Store Day now has a little bit of something for everybody. All right, guys, check us out online. And remember, we're going to be streaming all Record Store Day 11 hours straight. Until next time. Clean as a whistle. Clean as a whistle. I meant to say it's as clean as a whistle, not as quiet as a whistle.